All right, cool. So since we're recording, uh, that means we're live. You can, uh, it's going to be documented for your guys' reference later on. Um, if we check out the thread that I popped up real quick, we go to, it's really thinking about it. Um, but our thread for the day is updated. I'm trying to add this video I'm about to show y'all for the uh, LSF method, but it's not wanting to, um, it's not wanting to go through. So in the meantime, we're going to focus shift gears towards this anatomy um, LSF method, which stands for line, shape, and form. So I'm going to post the video real quick that I want to show you all. If it would let me embed, that would be awesome. Okay, so let's get rid of all this. Okay, sorry, it's a whole mess. There we go. All right, so the LSF gesture method is the quick way to, maybe not the quick way, but it is a breakdown of ways that you can really easily uh, gain a lot of dynamicism, a lot of energy, a lot of flow to your gesture drawings. And from there, build them into more fully fleshed out, um, more fully fleshed out characters or more uh, fully fleshed out anatomical designs here. So we're gonna watch this real quick. We're gonna practice it, and then I'll have you guys um, use it on your own drawings. So, oops, this is not YouTube, <laughs> my goodness. My, everything is going off today, apologize. Okay. Let's go back to our history here. This is also in our playlist. Oh, it's pretty loud, okay. Turn the heat down a little bit. Okay, cool. So we'll watch this real quick. Welcome to Drop Studio. Today we're going to learn about the line, shape, form, gesture method.
do this. There we go. Switch this over. Do a lot of button presses. Okay, so with the LSF method, that video is also, uh, if you ever need to reference it again, it's in our canvas. Um, in the playlist, I mean. So with line, shape, and form, line and shape are going to be the easiest because they're the most um, quote-unquote obvious. You can see how they translate the easiest um, from your reference, which I need to pull up a reference real quick. Um, let me know, dancing. This is how I want you guys to think about breaking down these references when you're wanting to draw your own um, gestures and figures. So the thing is, though, that you have to start by copying in order to kind of get a feel, the muscle memory for how the um, how the shape is created, how the shape interacts with other shapes, stuff like that. Um, so we do have to do a lot of copying before you can start applying these um, these ideas to um, your own intro or your own um, your own drawings. OK, so here's my reference on the screen share in Zoom. You should be able to see it. Um, as well as my video feed here. I'm still working out the best system for this, but I feel like it makes it a little bit bigger. Come on. Nope. Okay, it's fine. That's fine. Okay, so first, first things first, I'm going to use the Zoom annotate feature so you can see what I'm, uh, what I'm looking for, and then I'm going to translate it to my wrist uh, here. So we're going to go red for line, and we're going to go blue for shape. That first thing I'm looking for, back to yesterday, is that line of action. Remember, it's gonna typically start with the spine and continue through a leg. So since the line of action continues, it's not gonna take a hard break right here at the pelvis and go straight down to the floor. This is a much more gentle curve. Now let me do the, uh, I'll circle her head so we can have a, a head example right here. This line of action moves through the spine, curves down, and then moves out of the foot this direction. This is kind of our main establishing uh, angle that I'm looking for when I'm checking out my references. <laughs> There's also technically, if we really wanna get um, granular here, you can consider this the line of action, but I think uh, because this one includes the spine and includes the um, includes more majority of the torso, this is gonna be our main line of action <clears throat> that we're working with here. So with line, we want to establish, uh, if I go back to the notes I was taking, there's a basic main skeleton. If I, could, I can't zoom in on that camera, but I can uh, behind me. There's a basic skeleton that goes from the top of the head down to the bottom of the pelvis for the first half of the body, and then the legs, feet, and hands come uh, out from there. So let's um, kind of establish some of those lines using this LSF method here. We have a line for the shoulders, we have a line for the top of the head, which is gonna to connect to our spine like this. We have a line for the bottom of the pelvis, which I imagine is right about here. And then, um, well, hold on. Can I undo that? I can, perfect. Okay, so since this leg is gonna continue through this line, this pelvis line is gonna go based off the waist. It's gonna kind of be this direction, a little bit more dramatic. You can see that H shape kind of start to form where our line of action and our main spine is instead of drawing the spine more anatomical like this with our head here and then our chest here and then our hips here, right? Let me undo all that. Instead, we're focused more on how the spine interacts as kind of the C curve for the main um, chest space. We imagine our shoulder here, our pelvis here goes down to a leg, right? Instead of going for the more anatomical version, which is that question mark kind of in out S curve, we're going for more what, how does this line establish the way that my main torso is facing? So if our head's here looking up this way, that C curve follows where the outward um, of the chest happens. Let me undo all this real quick. Okay, so we have the top of our head, we have our shoulders, we have the bottom of our hips, Next, we need our um, we need our arms and legs. So we'll just go little triangles for the hands here. This is all still in the line phase technically, even though these are shapes. Well, I guess actually we'll just, we'll stick with line. We undo these. So we're gonna go straight line through the hands, straight line through the hands, and then kind of break down the arm into these into its two halves, and then the leg as well. Leg here, leg here, and then foot. 
and then this leg already has a foot attached to it. So that's how I'm visually looking for the line portion of LSF when I'm doing my uh, referencing from whatever gestures I'm coming up with. For full clarity, my field in visual arts is not drawing base. So this is just what I've experienced and found what's worked well as I translate from reference because I'm going all off of reference. A lot of your favorite artists, I'll start with references too. Um, but for transparency's sake, these are the things that I'm looking for when I'm uh, going off of a reference here. But anyways, that's besides the point. Let's move on to the second part, the second half. It's gonna be the shape portion. The two main shapes that you're gonna be looking out for are that kind of barrel shape in the chest, which you can kind of think of like a, um, like a U with a lid on it, right? This is where our rib cage lives. If you're thinking, um, there's our collarbone, right? It's a, um, it's a parabola. I can't remember if it's negative or positive, but it's a parabola that goes this way for the chest and the opposite for the hips. It's a little bit more squashed. It goes up and then over. So I'm gonna be looking for these two main shapes next and build out with my uh, face and hands and feet and stuff like that. And I'm gonna use blue for my, um, my shapes here. The chest connects at the shoulders and moves about halfway through, just kind of eyeballing, halfway through the spine distance here. So we're gonna connect just something like this. This one's more of a V shape based on the, um, cause you want an even amount of distance between your shoulders. Actually, I can do better, hold on. There we go, that's a little bit more accurate. So there's our chest occupying kind of right at the bottom of our rib cage. Again, we have a little bit of distance here between the belly button and the top of the hips. That half is more occupied by our hip shape. So this is not the most accurate here because this is quite a uh, dramatic pose. It's actually, let me see if I can. This hip line, actually a little bit more like this. So if we go back to red, this hip line kind of moves this way. So see already I've made, a, uh, I've made an adjustment. It's okay to make adjustments. But that hip shape is gonna connect here and then we'll draw our hands out as little kind of pizza slices from the wrist and the feet as well, kind of following that pizza slice idea. So we'll go, I can't really see this foot, but I can estimate pizza slice like this. And then we'll do a circle for the head. That top line is gonna be the top of our cranium, big part of our skull. And then I like to do an eye line as well, uh, just to see how everything shakes out. Okay. So the form part is the hard part, the part that takes a little bit more um, understanding and practice more so than anything. But the form is just how can you extract a 3D shape from these kind of outlines, these guidelines that you have uh, presented yourselves here. So the thing that I'm looking for is which side is closest to me. So if we're looking at a box, right? I can also do it on the page. We have our, I'll make it. Sorry. Okay. We have a box. Think back to perspective. Whichever um, side we want to be closest, so I can know that because she's turning this direction, her, fa her uh, C curve is kind of facing this direction. I know that this portion of my visual field is going to be covered up. So I'm going to see less of this detail on this half and more of this detail since this is the direction that we're twisting. You can kind of think of, if I change my color to yellow here real quick, you can think of, there's like a bucket right here or like a bracket of some kind that follows the line of action. And the side that's opposite that is gonna be more visual because this side is gonna be hidden. That will make more sense here in just a second. So with this box, I wanna decide first which side is closer to me and then pull my perspective out from there. Since I know that my character's body is mostly facing this way um, in the visual version, I know that a majority of that space is gonna be taken up by this uh, forward facing side. I'm not gonna be able to see much of this side. I am going to see more of this side. So if I were drawing this um, torso, if this were a torso, I would pull it this direction because I can see, stick to boxes so we don't have to do anything too crazy. Because I know that I can see more of the shoulder here. I can see more of the detail on the side here, more detail on the neck up here, more detail in the chest on this forward facing face, right? 
the arm comes out this way, whatever. So how do you translate that to your actual, um, your diagram that you've created here? Since we know that the, um, the eye kind of directs the entire, the eye and the belly button, if you uh, are a defensive sports player, um, those are the two things that direct the way that your character is going to move. So we want to go opposite that to portray the parts that we can actually see. So I'm going to go for form. I'm going to go, let's go orange. Orange kind of sounds like form. Can you see that okay? No, that's pretty hard to see. Let's do green for form. How about that? Okay, cool. That's a little bit easier to see. So coming off of the shoulders is the easiest place to start. I'm going to connect my box this way as best I can. Okay. And then pull that box down. Maybe a little bit more in line with the chest so that it meets the bottom down here. This is kind of one of just those things that you have to eyeball and experiment with, unfortunately. Um, but if we're looking at a cylinder, for example, like on the leg, there's going to be a round part, even though we can't see the entirety of the round portion. The round portion is going to start and end kind of at each half of the leg here. So if we circle this guy, there's our beginning, there's our end. You notice how it tapers. It gets larger at the top, or it is larger at the top. Just kind of generally, oops, I can't draw with a mouse very well. Let me turn my DPI down. I'm going to gently pull that line down, pull that line down, do the same thing here. We know that this cylinder starts here and ends here. Line down line down. It's just a way to kind of create how these forms are um, taking up the space here. Does that make sense? It's just a process. The first two are much easier. So like, for example, if I were drafting, um, if I were just kind of sketching out poses, not really thinking about how I wanted it to look at the end, kind of letting um, the pose decide what I want it to look like, I would start first with the top of that skull and then draw out a spine or a line of action of some kind and then marry it to a hip right down here. So I know that my legs are going to come off my hips in some capacity like this with feet like that. I have shoulders that I forgot to establish and I have my hands come out something like this. My characters, I'm kind of imagining now that I've just generally sketched it out, my character is moving this direction. Maybe something pushed them this way. Let's imagine this is pushing force. Okay. Here's my character's spine. Here's my character's hips. Here's the character's top or the top of my character's head in the visual field. Now I have my line drawing just kind of generally established. I can move on to the shape portion. So my character's rib cage is going to connect shoulder to shoulder. Their hips are going to connect hip to hip in opposite directions. We'll have pizza slices for hands pizza slices for feet, and then we'll draw out a head. So my head's kind of facing down, so it's gonna be a little bit closer to the neck. Um, and then from here, I can start thinking about what is visual in the form sort of section. So if we look here at, oh, let me draw some circles for my joints. I do smaller circles for the wrists when I'm sketching most of the time, larger circles for the elbows and knees. Um, but if we have a more of a gesture here, even just by kind of messing around, I'm talking while I'm doing it, right? I'm not super paying attention to the details. I can still create a fairly expressive gesture just by kind of thinking about how the line influences the shape, which will then influence the form, something like this. If we connect this box this way, like see even still mine's not very good. And then we'll have another box here. That makes up our hips. That connects these two. We have a cylinder. And then another cylinder. Right. Even if I'm not exactly sure where I'm going, I have some kind of map that will allow me to create a little bit of a gestured drawing here. So what I want you guys to do is, let me quit annotating and zoom here. What I, oh my goodness, um, sorry, hold on. Let me take a screenshot of this so we can keep it. All right, so we'll do that, cool. All right, so I'm gonna clear these annotations. So what I want you guys to do 
I got a whole bunch of stuff on my screen right now. Using this LSF method, draw four to six different poses or gestures. They can be from reference, but I want you guys to experiment with these three steps and kind of get a feel for how a gesture can either come out of it or you can copy a gesture from reference that will allow you to uh, draw a more detailed figure. Does that make sense? Does anybody have any questions on that? Yeah, Cheyenne. The pose like this, yeah. So a gesture is, um, you can break it down into the three lines, right? We have line, three steps, line, shape, and form. We're just gonna focus on these first two for now. The line is the one that kind of builds the skeleton. So let's say I wanted to make someone standing. There's the top of my head, go down a little bit. There's my shoulders, down a little bit more. This is quite a bit bigger. We won't be able to get much leg in there. And then here's my hips right here. Just kind of breaking down how the character uh, is made out of lines first. So if we have our hands on our hips, maybe like this. These are our hips, these are our shoulders. This is the top of our head. By using these lines, we can kind of break down the skeleton of how a character might look, and you can build uh, build up from there. Does that make more sense? Okay, I can help you at your desk, too. No worries. All right, so you guys draw four to six different poses or gestures, and uh, after that, we'll talk about character design. So I'm going to close up the Zoom room for now um, so that I can process this video and stuff, and we'll be back in about, I don't know, how much time do we have? 15 minutes. We might put, we'll push character design to Thursday if we have to. Okay. All right. Where are my zoom controls? Zoom controls. There we go.